sun descends like a dove and baptizes in the fire. He comforts, comforts guides, guides, and corrects. He is the spirit of life, the essence of truth, the voice of God. And when you are alone, lost, and afraid, he will carry you home. first part of a four-part series that we have entitled The Ghost, and we are going to be talking about the Holy Spirit, who he is, how we can have a relationship with him, and how he can work through our lives to touch and bless other people. Now, we've been talking about the kingdom of God for, the, for most of this year thus far, and the way that the kingdom of God is manifested in our lives is through the Holy Spirit. And so when Jesus was preparing to leave this world and go back to God, he informed his disciples that they did not need to be concerned or need to be sad because of his departure because God was going to send someone else who was going to help them. And here is what Jesus said. Jesus said in John chapter 14, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. And we're going to talk a little bit later about what that word advocate means there. But Jesus said to these disciples who really were broken, if you read John chapter 14, he tells them that I'm going to be leaving you. In fact, in John chapter 13, he lets them know that I'm going to be leaving you. I won't be with you all the way. And then they're just broken by this. Jesus, how can you leave us? We need you. They were saddened. They were broken. But Jesus' encouragement to them was you have nothing to fear or nothing to be worried about because when I'm going to ask the Father and he's going to give you another advocate who will never leave you. And then Jesus explains who this is. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. And so what I want to do today is answer the question, who is he. Who is the Holy Spirit? I want to give you three characteristics of who he is to help guide our discussion. First off, he is a person. Now, this is an important distinction because many of us see the Holy Spirit as a force or a power, but we don't see him as a being. And as much as God the Father is a being, and Jesus Christ the Son is a being, so too is the Holy Spirit. He is a person that we can relate to and have a relationship with. And so as we're talking about the Holy Spirit, I don't want you to think about he's a force and a power. I want you to think of him as a person who desires to commune and fellowship with you. Second, he is an advocate. He is an advocate. That's that word we saw in the scripture there. I want to break it down for you to understand what the underlying Greek word is. Oh, this is on your note sheet as well. It is the word parakletos is the word in Greek for what we translate as advocate. Parakletos is made up of two Greek words that are put together. The first is para, which is to be aside or to come along the side of like parallel lines. They go in the same direction beside each other, and they never cross. That's what para means. And then kletos comes from the Greek root kaleo, which means to call. So the Holy Spirit, in essence, is someone who is called by our side. He's called to be by our side. So the reason why Jesus said that he was going to pray the Father and he was going to send someone to be by our side because the disciples were broken over the fact that Jesus had talked about he was leaving. So Jesus let them know, listen, I'm leaving, but you're going to have someone who's going to be beside you, and that someone is never going to leave you. Now I'm preaching way better than you all are saying amen right now. Because when you recognize that you don't serve a God who just dwells in the atmosphere up in some throne up in heaven, but you worship a God who comes down and takes up residence in your life, in your home, in your family, and he's there wherever you are, he is, that's good news. 
So he is a person. That's why you never refer to the Holy Spirit as an it, because he's a person, and you always recognize that he's with you. As a believer, wherever you are, he is. Let me say it again. Wherever, wherever, he does not take a day off. He does not take a holiday. So wherever you go, he's there. Whatever you look at, he sees. Whatever you listen to, he hears. <laughs> Whatever you type, he sees. He is always with us. And here's what he's defined as. He's defined as an intercessor. That's somebody who's praying for you. God loves you enough that he assigned you your own prayer partner. He's also a consoler. That when your heart is broken, he'll be there to let you know that everything is going to be all right. He's an advocate. He'll fight for you. When you feel like nobody will fight for you, he's going to fight for you. He's also a comforter. When you need someone just to embrace you and let you know that God is still there and God has not forgotten about you and his purposes and his plans for your life have not changed, he is a comforter. And then lastly, he is a helper. He's there to help you when you've gone as far as you can go and you've done all you know to do, the Holy Spirit as a helper steps in and says, I'll go the rest of the way. That's why Paul could say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He was talking about having the Spirit of God who empowers us that when we're ready to give out, the Holy Spirit kicks in and says, come on, we can keep on going. We need to know who the Holy Spirit is. And then lastly, he is a gift. Jesus said, I'm going to pray the Father, and he's going to send you the Holy Spirit, send you a comforter, send you an advocate, send you somebody who's called to be beside you. He is a gift to you. You can't conjure him up. You can't work him up. You can't earn him. He is a free gift. And when you pray, God, fill me with your spirit, at that moment, he fills you with his spirit. His spirit is now resident inside of you, and all you have to do is tap into who he is, and you'll see some dynamic things happen in your life. But sadly, many of us live our lives without knowing who the Holy Spirit is. And that's why we struggle in our relationship with God. That's why we struggle in our walk as Christians, because it just seems so hard. How can I live the way Jesus wants me to live? It feels like it's such hard work. Well, that's because you're doing it by yourself. The Holy Spirit was sent to help us live the life that God wants us to live. And so even though his disciples were hurting and broken, Jesus let his disciples know, it is actually to your advantage that I leave. Here's what Jesus says in John chapter 16. He says, it is actually best for you that I go away because if I don't, the counselor, advocate, Helper, consoler, comforter won't come. Jesus said, I'm only one man. I can only be in one place at one time as a human. But when I leave, now my spirit can be wherever you are. And so wherever you are, that's where I will be. I don't have to be limited by a human form. By my spirit, I can be with each and every one who calls on the name of Jesus. That's why it's to our benefit. Because if not, if Jesus lived in the Middle East, we'd all be taking flights to get over there to see Jesus. But thank God, he's right where we are. And all we have to do is call on his name, and he will answer us. That's why you have to get out of your mind that you're serving some distant God 
who sits up in heaven looking down on us. No, no, no. The God that we serve is a God that comes right where we are. If you're in a hospital room right now, you're not alone. Jesus is there with you by his spirit. If you are broken at home and you're wondering what your next steps are going to be, you are not alone at home because Jesus is there with you by his spirit, bidding you to keep on going on. Don't give up in living. Wherever you are, on your job, in your car, wherever you find yourself, Jesus, by his spirit, is there with you. So why don't we embrace the Holy Spirit more as a helper, a counselor, a comforter, a consoler, and an advocate? Why don't we embrace him more? Well, I believe there are two reasons why. The first is simply we don't know. Ignorance. We just don't know. We know about God the Father. We know about Jesus. But we really haven't been taught who the Holy Spirit is. And so for us, when we don't know something, we just shy away from it. And for those of you who haven't received the teaching on the Holy Spirit, I hope that you'll stay with us for these next, uh, next four weeks or next three weeks of after today because you're going to learn more about who he is and how he wants to interact with you in your life. But you cannot let ignorance stop you from having a dynamic relationship with Jesus. Here's what happens in, in Acts chapter 19. They come upon some believers in Ephesus, and they ask them an important question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they honestly res responded and said, no, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And I wonder if that's you today. You've given your heart to Jesus but you don't know about who the Holy Spirit is. Now, the wonderful part of this story is once they said this, then they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began a dynamic relationship with him from that point forward. And my prayer is that over the course of this series, for those of you who have not been filled with the Spirit of God, that you will, we will ask for the Spirit of God to fill you, and you will live your life at a new level of power, at a new level of intentionality, because the Spirit of God is in you. But I also want to address another group of people, because for some it's ignorance, but for others it's resistance. You may have experienced some aspects of what people called the Holy Spirit, and quite frankly, it turned you off. You saw some things that people attributed to the Holy Spirit, and you basically said, I don't want any part of that. So you have a mental block now as it relates to having a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was growing up, we grew up in a church that was um, one of those shouting churches. And so every now and then, um, when, when, when we started to feel the Spirit, the organ would play, people would dance and shout, we'd have a good time. And then more often than not, there was always somebody who would take off running. And they would run, and they would run, and they would run. They'd run around the church, run around the church. Well, one time, the church had just purchased some new glass doors. And just like the doors that you entered in, except they were all glass. And this woman, she got the Holy Ghost. She was dancing, and she started running. She ran right into that glass door, and it broke, and she went through the glass door. And at that moment, I said, now, if that is the Holy Ghost... I don't want anything to do with him. If he makes you do stuff like that, I'll pass. And at that point, I had a resistance because I was like, you know, God, if you make people do that kind of stuff, you know, that's, that's kind of strange. But thankfully, someone took the time to teach me and help me understand that the Holy Spirit did not make her do that. Those were her actions. He moved on her, and in response to her sensing his presence, she started running, and she made the decisions, and that was her action. It was not something that the Spirit of God caused her to do. And that cleared up for me a lot of the questions I had, because we were taught that the Holy Spirit, he'll make you move, he'll make you shout, you know, he'll make you do stuff. And so when I saw people doing stuff that looked kind of spooky and strange, um... I said, no, I'll pass on that Holy Spirit stuff. You know, in fact, there was something, I remember <laughs> there was this one lady, she was uh, very spiritual. And so whenever you'd greet her, you'd say, hey, how are you doing? And she would kind of look at you like, 
and she was always just weird. And I was like, why is she so weird? You know, and then I learned from others that she, you know, before she became a Christian, she was weird. So <laughs> it had nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. She was weird and, you know, she became weirder, I guess, you know. So, so we have to be careful not to allow the actions of people saying that the God is making them do things, that that impugns the character of who God is. So if you're in a resistant state today, I ask you to open your mind. And see anew who the Holy Spirit is and how you can have a relationship with him. Because there were resistant people in the Bible. In Acts chapter 7, here's what it says. You stubborn people, you are heathen at heart and deaf to the truth. Must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? See, some of you have been resisting him. He's been trying to get your attention. He's been trying to have a relationship with you, but you've been resisting it. And I want you today to let that resistance go. And allow the Holy Spirit to begin a relationship with you. Because all he wants to do is to help you. He wants to comfort you, to console you. And that's where we've got, we, we had it wrong in the old church. We had it thinking that the, whole, the best the Holy Spirit could do was make you hurt and jerk and feel warm and fuzzy and get goosebumps. And we thought as long as we got that, we were good. But what we missed was the Holy Spirit is, is given into our lives as a gift so that every day we can walk in power. It's not about what happens in church. It's about how he helps me when I'm not in church. And he shows me and he leads me and he guides me. So, three things I want to tell you about the Holy Spirit so you can understand who he is. Point number one, he comforts you. If you've ever been in a situation where you've been hurting, where your heart's been broken, where life is throwing you a curve and you don't know what the next step should be. And the people who said they would be there for you are not there for you. But yet you didn't lose your mind. It's because the Holy Spirit stepped in and he comforted you. When you had more questions than answers, when you didn't know exactly which way to turn, the Holy Spirit stepped in and served as a comforter to you. When you felt like everybody had abandoned you, even God, the Holy Spirit let you know, that God's never going to leave you, and he's never going to forsake you. That's why one of the definitions for that word paraclete is the word comforter. I will give you another comforter. He's sent to comfort us in our difficult moments. Why would you pass, the, pass that up? Why would you pass up the opportunity to have God be right there with you as the tears are falling, as you're on the floor writhing in pain, why would you pass up having the, the knowledge that God wants to be right there with you, comforting you and helping you get back on your feet? He's a comforter. And he will be there for you whenever you need him. Secondly, the Holy Spirit will counsel you. Now, we have an affinity for knowing what tomorrow holds. And so we're always trying to figure out what's coming up next. Some people get the newspaper only so they can go to the horoscope section and see what the horoscope is saying is going to happen to them that day. Well, I want you to know that you're going to a counterfeit because God has given believers access to his spirit and his spirit will tell us everything we need to know. You don't need tarot cards. You don't need to go to a medium or a psychic. You don't need any of those other false opportunities to learn about the future. When you have the Spirit of God, he will lead you where God wants you to go. Look at what the Bible says. Jesus said this. Jesus said when the spirit of truth comes, and that's a powerful designation because he, he needs us to understand that in this age of relativism, alternative facts, and fake news, that there is still truth. And we need to understand that as much as our culture wants to embrace the whatever your truth is is good for you, whatever my truth is is good for me, that is a lie. There is a truth, and his name is Jesus. And the standard that he sets is the one that all of us must adhere to. 
because Jesus does not play favorites. And so there is not a my truth and your truth. Uh Uh-uh. There's only one truth with a capital T, and his name is Jesus. And and he was, his truth was put in the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. So when the spirit of truth comes, come on, he will guide you into, he'll guide you into truth. So why are you looking at a horoscope? Why are you calling your friends to find out what you should do when you've got the truth? Why are you putting out on social media, hey, I need to make a decision. What do you all think I should do? Why would you do that when you have him? The spirit of truth, he'll guide you into all truth and then he will tell you about the about the future he will tell you about the future you don't need to consult any other false uh, source for for, for your future God knows your future do you agree that God knows your future well he wants to tell you now here's the caution he will never tell you all of your future at once because quite frankly you can't handle it I can't handle it. So what the Holy Spirit does is he gives us the next three steps. And once we've taken those steps, then he gives us the next three steps. And then he gives us the next three steps. But he will not give us the whole picture because if he showed you the whole picture, you could not handle it. So he gives it to you step by step, bite by bite, so that you can digest it and you can simply follow God every day and you will end up exactly where he wants you to go. I want you to live a life where you are hearing the voice of God. You are sensitive to his leading and guiding. I'm not talking about hearing an audible voice, hello, I'm talking to you. It may not happen like that, but you may sense an unction. You may sense something on the inside, a a decision. There may be a persistent thought that keeps coming to your mind. You may just be drawn to go do something. Don't ignore those promptings because they are more often than not the Spirit of God trying to lead you and to guide you. Now, there are times when God will speak audibly and your natural ear will hear, but those are very rare in my experience. But God wants to speak and communicate with you every day. Look at what Isaiah prophesies in Isaiah 30. He says, your ear, your own ears. Oh, that's, I, your, your own ears. Stop trying to listen through somebody else's ear. You don't have to keep running to conferences trying to get a word from the Lord. The Lord will speak to you right where you are. Your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way. You should go. You don't have to drift through life. You don't have to wonder, where is my life going? When you wake up every day and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you, you know that you'll end up exactly where God wants you to be. And then lastly, the Holy Spirit will convict you. Now, what makes Hope Cathedral a unique church is that we never try to get in God's way. We recognize that our role is simply to coach you, to guide you, to point you towards the truth of God's word, to teach you what God's word says. But beyond that, it's God's job to convict you. It's God's job to speak into your life about areas that you need to change. Now, be very clear. We teach the word of God and teach the standards of God and how God expects us to live. But ultimately, you must allow the Holy Spirit to convict you about areas in your life that you need to change. Wow, this gets so quiet whenever I talk about conviction. God wants you to grow, but you won't grow without some conviction. Because God's going God's to witness to you there's some behaviors that you need to change. And I'm not just talking about sinful behaviors. God may witness to you you're watching too much television. God may be witnessing to you you're eating the wrong foods. God may witness to you that you're on social media too much. God may witness to you that you're spending too much time around the wrong people. 
I'm not talking about blatant sin, but God will, will convict you about areas that are keeping you off track. And he wants to get you back on track. Imagine God loves you so much that he puts a navigation system, a personal navigation system on the inside of you when you become one of his, one of his, his followers. And if you'll listen to that personal navigation system, it will lead you in the right direction all the time. We usually get in trouble when we ignore the early warning system. And we end up getting off track because we won't heed his conviction. Here's what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. When he comes, talking about the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. And so when you have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, he will work in you and on you to identify areas that you need to grow in. But also what happens is when you come in contact with other people, the Spirit of God inside of you, without you saying a word, will also convict people who are around you. That's why there are certain things people don't want to do when they're around you. Not because you said anything, but because there is a mantle you wear that comes from the Spirit of God. And when you're around, it sends conviction to everybody who's around you. That's why it's not a bad thing when people stop gossiping when you come around. That's why it's not a bad thing when people change their behaviors when you come around. Because I believe that is an indication that they are recognizing that there is something on you that's different and unique and they don't want it to be polluted by bad activity around. I remember as a young man, and we're going to close, I remember as a young man, I accepted my call at the age of nine, preached my first sermon at the age of 14, and you know, kids like, you know, they would have these little parties on Friday night, and I'd go to the party trying to hang out, and man, it'd make me so mad, because I'd walk in to hang out with, at the party, and they'd all look at me, and they'd say, you don't belong here. I don't know, everybody else is here, why do I belong here? But literally, and I, and I would just leave. And every time I try to go somewhere, I'd go to a, a friend's house who was having a party. I'd walk in, and everybody would look at me like, what are you doing here? And that's why I really socially, I stopped doing a lot of things because the Spirit of God who was in me and on me was protecting me from getting into some things that I did not need to be involved in. He will convict you. Nobody had to tell me. God witnessed it to me. And I was able to respond. And so I want you to have this conviction about your, your walk with God. That when you have the Holy Spirit operating in your life, he gives you a supernatural advantage. I mean, as a Christian, you have a secret weapon. That whether you're in sales or whether you're, you're in, in, in some kind of corporate arena or whether you're even doing construction, I don't care what your job is, when you have the Spirit of God in you, He's always going to give you a supernatural advantage over everybody else. And that's because God wants His people to always be a step ahead. And so I want you today to receive Him to drop your resistance, or for those who didn't know, to begin to get this information and then welcome the Holy Spirit into your life and invite him to comfort you, invite him to convict you, and invite him to guide you, to counsel you in every area of your life. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed.